are you coming to? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah. It's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and... Evil Dead Inks and Rogers. No place to turn around. There's never any place to turn around. This sucks. Assholes don't know how to make roads. (laughs) Oh my god. You knew it was going to happen. It had to happen. It was inevitable since we're covering this franchise. We had to get... I mean, we've had a we've had a bump in the road. This is not a bump in the road. This is like a full blown uh, Ghostbusters size, uh, whatever you call it, sinkhole. This oh. is fucking rough. <laughs> uh, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation, filmed I think in '94, released in '96. That'll tell you something. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I keep I keep wanting. To give it the benefit of the doubt, man, like maybe it's maybe this time I'm just gonna see <laughs> what it is about this movie that makes it because I feel like it's gotta be it's just got to be it's so bad that it's good. Because I mean, Scream <laughs> Factory put out a really nice edition of like I know they just have they have said before like they just have a net and whatever they can kind of get they'll get. And I was like, they got next gen, <laughs> huh? Maybe you're like, yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe I need to grow so that I can appreciate this movie. Maybe it was good and I Or may, or, I have or maybe I, I just I've need been to there. maybe I just need to regress more. Maybe I'm looking too <laughs> too harshly at it. Maybe I just need to lighten up. Maybe I need like a three drink minimum and then start the movie. Or like I need to pop an edible or two, wait an hour, and then watch the movie. Maybe it'll do something mm. then. Maybe it's just, there's just something there and there's not Mm-mm. no no um as much as i you know we preach this all the time i love to say that like if you didn't like a movie one time give it a break come back to it later you know give it its fair shake and i will go ahead and say i think you and i have given this movie enough fair shakes probably too many fair shakes and it still happens to be one of those movies where maybe once a year year and a half i'll throw it on because my wife thinks it's hilarious so she loves it and i just want to drill like straight through my brain when this movie is on i just can't do it we really should have just had her on for this just to get a fan's perspective explanation like what (laughs) like what does she find funny like what is it that like that's that's the even rewatching it this past week, I was like, "All right, I need to refresh." Because that, that's the other thing about this movie is I will remember like the beats to it, mm-hmm. but finer details. Which I mean, they don't even give a fuck seemingly about that either. But I was like, I don't remember no. a lot of the finer details in this. And I certainly have a hard time. Like day of, I can remember most of the characters' names, but give me like oh, it doesn't matter. Give me like three days, and I'm like, uh, Barry. Uh, that's Barry. about all I got. Yeah. Renee Zellweger. Jenna. Uh, dude with uh, super 90s parted in the middle hair. I was like, but, uh, sh- Renee's boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, that dude sending me some signals, I'll say. Dude in car accident? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I'm going to kill you. It ain't no fucking biggie. There's the other Matthew thing. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, there's the other thing that's be- that, that got this movie buried for two years is it's two juggernauts in yeah. cinema making, both just needing work at the same time. Renez, Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. And it's like it's the most well-known trivia effect to let you know both of them made a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Thanks. Yeah, and well, you know, here's the thing. Everybody, when they become an actor, they start out in horror. It's just how it is, man. It's an easy uh, genre to get a gig in. And I know that it was it was Jerry, Jerry Maguire, right, that like 
fucking blew them up or what was the movie that blew them up and so then they they were like ah, sweep this under the rug I think it was separate projects I think oh, yeah, maybe for, for no I, I think maybe uh, a time to kill may have been may have been McConaughey's but he's been kind of always there just dazed and confused maybe I'm, I'm probably <laughs> I mean this movie does do everything McConaughey if you watch Matthew McConaughey and everything he ever fucking does he's pointing at some point in the movie mm-hmm. if Brad Pitt's eating all the time McConaughey is pointing at shit and he always is, and he does it in this movie uh, but yeah like it they had both done it and then it sat on the shelf for a while and then they're like alright we're gonna put this thing out and then either one or both their agents were like <laughs> oh no I don't think you should do that. <laughs> and I think... Can't, you can't stop them. I, I, well, they somehow did. I think they got a super, super limited theatrical run. And then it was quickly swept away and put onto uh, rentals. Which, even at time of rentals, I had no idea who either of them two yeah. are. So they were just two more people. I was like, oh, and next, another tech, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Let's see where they pick up. And oh my gosh... Even like the opening, like they try to redo I, I, Kim Hinkle, one of the key like pillars in the franchise, and from the first movie, mm-hmm. is back here doing some writing and shit. And even the opening yeah. like narration, the scrawl reading, the dude just sounds unenthused and un- un- uninterested in reading about it. <laughs> yeah. The, okay, so they with part three, which you and I adore, mm. we feel like. In part three, they went back to some of that gritty stuff that made the first one work, and but did it with kind of like this weird 90s flair. And with this movie, it felt like they tried to go back to the well to, to make it feel like the first movie, but it doesn't have any of that like... 90s gore grit or any like it doesn't have I don't think it, it's just missing it's missing everything yeah I, I don't think anything about this resembles any movie previously they try to no, tell us it wanted to they try to tell us in that scroll that like some blips on the radar may have happened but then and then silence I'm guess I'm guessing that's their explanation for parts two and three because mm-hmm. they just kind of really go I don't know where with the story because like well this is part four what are we gonna do I'm like well that thing of some movies do like well this is you don't have to watch the other retcon yeah yeah, you don't have to watch any movie previously to watch any other movie in this series nothing is connected at all except leatherface right well since it's not connected evil uh do you want to give the good folks out there in internet land just a brief (laughs) plot synopsis uh the best you can and um we'll get going (laughs) so it's prom Time or a football <laughs> game is going on. I think it's the prom, just the it's prom. A dance, but I've, yeah. I saw some somebody said it was like there was a football like thing going which on. Would be homecoming, right? At the same time, so I, I I don't know which, but there's a high school dance. Kids get into a like car, have an accident, keep driving, have another accident, <laughs> then they stop. And decide to split up and walk down roads, come across what would be their variation of the cook with, you know, Miss Davis from Varsity Boobs. Blues. Boobs. Yeah, same same kind of role as she's in, like, a very suit-looking get-up. Gets, Big shoulder gets, pad. gets nude and in Texas. Yeah, like that. I was mm-hmm. like, holy shit, that is Miss Davis from Varsity Blues. Uh, sends in... The family, so we have Vilmer, played by Matthew McConaughey, and probably a, a pretty fitting, I, th- I think he would fit in well with any other movie, if you put him in as part of the family, with, it'd be... With, uh, yeah, with uh, Tex and um, Tinker. Yeah, he would be fine. I even don't like, I even don't mind W.E., like, he seems... Yeah, he's alright. He's he's alright, he's a, he's, he's a nice, quirky guy. I think we... Drawing a line in the sand. <laughs> And of course, we have Leatherface pop up, which not weakest. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty substandard Leatherface and camo, and that ain't even that ain't even the half of it. Substandard. I mean, but this is they like kind of lean into him being back into being a cross dressing sorts. But man, if you ever thought he was a second or third tier character, he really takes it in this movie. But so this gang of kids split up. 
they're slowly or not really slowly they're pretty they're picked off pretty pretty effectively i think in under 20 minutes we're down to just renee zellweger and her friend heather who just refuses to die there's yeah. there's a consistent thing thing from part two we just have a side character who just will not die <laughs> Taking it, licking, and keep on ticking. Yeah, we and then we get the traditional. She's caught. We have kind of a dinner set up, but instead of pizza, yeah, it's just takeout pizza this time around. And then Jesus. dude in suit shows up, who gives us the impression that like there's an Illuminati presence in this film. It's even even like uh, printed on the side of Vilmer's tow truck, pickup truck. Dude has like three rings and a fucked up looking chest on him. When he opens yeah. it up, licks Renee Zellweger all across the face. Then he fucks off. Renee Zellweger <laughs> gets away. Matthew McConaughey's face is cut up by an air propeller blade. And then the limo Illuminati business guy shows back up, takes her to the hospital to where she sees Marilyn Burns getting pushed by on a stretcher from the very first movie and we get some voiceover from a cop asking what in the hell's going on here and uh that's exactly what i was saying yeah it's it is such a jumbled uh weird mess of a movie right like it feels like they have a bunch of ideas and and they just put them all together like it feels rushed. No... It feels like if they like this is something that should be maybe played out over like three movies slowly, mm-hmm. but they're like, we got to fucking move, 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 move. Like there's even like even when the girl Heather gets taken into the house and gets put on the hook by Leatherface straight up from the first mm-hmm. one, put back on the hook. We don't see anything of her again until she's all of a sudden in the middle of this of the of a dirt road. Just laying yeah, like there, she, and I'm like, "How the fuck she get there? How'd she get off the hook?" And it's, are we watching Muck? Yeah, I was like, "Where? Where? How?" It this this is one of the movies that you're a compelled to look at your phone at parts of it just because of nothing going on. And then if you're mm-hmm. paying attention, you felt like you did lose consciousness for a few minutes. And you're like, "Wait, did I miss? How, when did she get off the fucking hook?" <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's kind of all over the place as far as. Uh, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie goes and you, I mean, when you were talking about the family members you kind of hit the nail on the head with the Leatherface being like a, he's like the third tier quarterback, right? Like yeah. third string quarterback. We'll, we'll call you if we need you. And Leatherface has he's, kind of really one and a half scenes yeah. and that's even a, uh, even rewatching it this time I was like, do we have Renee Zellweger in the truck with McConaughey she gets out, runs into the woods. He just, kind of, I mean, it's the middle of the woods. It is not strategic seeming at all. <laughs> he just backs up and fucking leaves. And then Leatherface just pops out of the woods with the chainsaw and proceeds in the, the foot chase for a while. There's his, of course, why not? Yeah, there's his big scene. Trailer moment. Yeah, and then he does it again at the very end of the movie when he's in his negligee wig and lip, lipstick in the back of the truck, which we get. <laughs> A better, like, shit fit kind of dance at the end. I feel like it's it's leaning more into <laughs> shit fit territory than it is, you know, part two, the, yeah. the fucking leather face shimmy thing. The people listening cannot see me shaking uh, my head aggressively. Uh, I don't... Mm. I tried. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> it feels it feels like Texas Chainsaw Massacre made on a made for TV sci fi budget. Yeah, like uh, the like X Files X Files budget. I wouldn't even Texas Chainsaw. Massacre. I would say X Files has a bigger budget. It had a bigger budget oh, well. than any of these. Like it's the Leatherface looks so he doesn't look right. Like I don't know something about mm. him being in camo fatigues. And like, like a, a mullet, yeah, this curly mullet, a dark hair mullet, and the mask doesn't look great. He doesn't look like a big imposing guy. He looks, and even acts in this movie like like R- R- Renee Zellweger straight up tells him to shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down, and he does. 
Mm-hmm. He's scared. You can't. You could not tell R.A. Mihailov or Gunnar Hansen to do that. Shit. No. <laughs> you might be able to tell Bubba from part two because he was a little bitch too. But, uh, yeah, that's my biggest problem with this movie, right? Okay, so all the bullshit aside, all the 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 terrible um, dance, Timing. the car crashes, the, the the yeah, the the bad. Uh, that's crazy. They get into a dialogue. literal car wreck and they just drive away. And there, no one in the car is like, "Oh shit, we were just in an accident. We just did a hit and run." They just continue conversation as if they didn't mm-hmm. just hit a car and take off. Right. Uh, we should probably report this, but <laughs> this is the nineties. Yeah. None of that shit is real. <laughs> I'll tell you this, all of the bullshit in this movie would 100% be forgivable to me if they delivered on Leatherface. I'd be like, ah, it's good to watch these fucking people die, you know, because Leatherface is here doing his thing. It would be like the payoff, even though the movie is wretched. If Leatherface was fucking them up, I would I would give it a pass, but I have the biggest problem ever with the the cross dressing leather face I know and and the argument is he wore the pretty woman mask in the first movie but I just assume in that movie it feels like he's dressing up for dinner it doesn't feel um I don't know it doesn't feel as sissified as it is in this movie it just feels so weird in this movie and it bothers me, and like you said, he's a whiny, sniveling baby. So he just, he, yeah, he, you totally are in, like making him the softest character in the movie, and he's the one you're supposed to be afraid of, and that's the problem. I think it's the the guy playing it is trying to reach where Gunnar Hansen may have been, in the aspect mm-hmm. of like, yeah, cross dressing to fill the role of the missing female presence in the family. But I think the guy's really trying to go capture the Gunnar Hansen, like, uh, the mentally challenged, like, he's fairly just simple, and shit yeah. can just frustrate him. But what falls apart is he just is really leaning too too much into that, like, when, he's, when he puts Heather into the uh, freezer that looks more like a, a, a storage container than a freezer... But puts her in it, and she pops out, and he puts her back in it again, and puts... I mean, it, I, it, I guess it's supposed to imply something heavy, but it looks just like a plastic box or something. <laughs> like, it doesn't look mm-hmm. something that's going to, like, put the weight... Like, Ari Mihailov or Gunner would put, like, a diesel engine on top of yeah, this thing. Yeah, an engine block. Yeah, and this thing <laughs> sure. this thing just looks like just some plastic garbage thing just puts on, and that's going to wear her down, and, and he just goes into a... One of his several, like, screaming into the light things. Like, I think you're just trying a bit too hard for this, yeah. where a little bit would go a lot further. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, with that, that's the other thing, is that constant whine that he does. Yeah. Uh, it, Gunner, it, I, Gunner, I mean, had a, Gunner had a whine or, a, or, like, a little quirky... <laughs> it's almost like a like a scared puppy thing that Gunner was doing. This guy is just... And, like, and that was only to the other family members. We we are... And there, there's the thing. We're intro, introduced to Leatherface, afraid to disturb this girl sitting on a bench that he's behind. And mm-hmm. then when she turns around, like he's... Like freaking out as much as she is. I was like, yeah. that's where the mistake starts right there. It's like, that's where he should have just... Smack yeah. her in the fucking face with a hammer. Yeah, hit her with the fucking hammer, and, like, and then maybe like freaked out a little bit, like where this person comes. Yeah, where she's, where did she come from? Why is she here? Kind of thing. But no, it's a, it's a scared to do anything as much as she's scared of him, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and that doesn't work. No, and that's you might you might have got it. That's why we hate it so much. Because I mean, he's our, he's our go-to guy. He's our poster boy. He's the muscle. And, he's supposed to be the muscle. Mm-hmm. And. I mean, what year did we say this was? 95, 96? Uh, ni- uh, 94, I think released in 90s. Maybe 97. 96 or 97. You're a wrestling guy, so you probably know the exact time. When did Mi- uh, Mick Foley like introduce us to Mankind? March 1996. Okay, because like Mankind, for anyone listening who isn't a wrestling fan, 
uh, just just look up some some video of mankind. He kind of had that uh, 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 that that weird whine that he would do. Anna, Anna. Yeah, and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pull his hair out and the whole promo like. Yeah. Crying. The way he talked was almost in a cry. And to me, like mankind never crossed um, into like annoying territory for me. Because he eventually became a baby face, you know, and all that. So, so you, you ride with him. Uh, well, Leatherface is our baby face. He's not our heel. But he's all he does is whine. And it, it, <laughs> it makes it hard. You know, because by this, this is the fourth entry. You're you're not watching this these movies going, well, I sure hope these teenagers get out of here alive. You're watching it going, <laughs> fucking A, Leatherface. Get them. And... He's so fucking soft, dude. Oh, this is also in the mid '90s, so we're in the the, the severe decline in horror movies being a thing. Period. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all that all that steam kind of just gets dumped into McConaughey's Vilmer role. He has I, he has how everything. Do you outwork him, huh? I, like, how do you outwork him though? You know what I mean? Like, true, but it's I kind mean, of like how him- R. A. Mihailov is good, but and he's the man. But for us, we're always Alfredo guys. Like, yeah, how, but I mean, you can't outshine. You can't outshine. But I mean, he doesn't need all the characteristics. Like he's True. he's the eccentric kind of dude that sounds like the hitchhiker, but he's also mm-hmm. got the the imposingness of a, what Leatherface is supposed to be. Like he's he's the muscle and he's the eccentric guy. Because I don't know what the hell he's talking about most of the time in this movie. I don't even know if he knows what he's talking about most of the time when he's in this movie. He just kind of says rambling. says things and then starts cutting himself. And we really highly and even like listening in super close, like getting closer to the TV, like scooching up little bit by little bit. Like, all right, I might get some dialogue between him and this business guy that's gonna make sense this time and explain explain why the fuck he shows up and is seemingly in control of this family or even the aspects mm-hmm. of why Vilmer has this girlfriend Darla that sticks or the around. robot leg brace that I actually don't mind I actually kind of that's probably the like the one quirky characteristic I'm like that's silly but I'll, I'm gonna go with it I think the wife hates it which sidebar when I pulled this movie out and put it on the stand in front of the TV, like, oh, I need to, for my own reminder, like, I need to watch this before we record again so I can be <laughs> as fresh as I could be. And she looked at that shit like I'd pulled a fucking gun out. She's like, why'd you pull Next Gen out? What are you doing, Dave? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're we're going to watch it every day this week. <laughs> and oddly... Get ready. <laughs> and oddly enough, after like three days of it just sitting there, she's like... So when are we going to watch it? Like, I, I don't know if she was curious to give it another shot as well or just get it the fuck over with. But <laughs> She was like three days of her not saying anything. Then it was like, can we just watch it and be done? <laughs> it's threatening. Me. Yes. Yeah, it's looking like you at can't, me. Like she couldn't enjoy her day because she's like, yeah. Look. And then she looked down just a little bit underneath the TV and like, there it is. Just fucking waiting. <laughs> yeah. Like some insidious piano chords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tiptoeing through the tulips is right underneath her, her usual cinema going experience. Oh, lordy, lordy. Oh, man. But, all right. Damn. We will, uh, if anyone listening, they're like, damn, they got to find something good to say about this. We have one. Just one. Yes. <laughs> and it's a whole. <laughs> Second, maybe 1.5 seconds of cinema screen time on this movie, but that I can be like, all right, I I, I feel justified in keeping <laughs> a copy of this movie on hand, and why someone would want to remaster it. I was like maybe it's just because they love this one scene, this spot. Yeah, go ahead, man, because it's it was yours before. I like. I was totally thinking it was other scenes. Oh, shit, no, it's this one right here, but go ahead. Uh, lay, the, so. lay, the, lay the groundwork for this shot. So McConaughey is in hot pursuit, and he jumps from the porch roof <laughs> onto the car. That Renee Zellweger is trying to get away in. 
and uh, he just makes the weirdest noise in the history of noise and I've always thought it was funny my wife thinks it's hilarious and upon your rewatch I think it it fucking hit you right in the tickle bone <laughs> like, like alright here it is Beep. <laughs> yes. It's so fucking good, dude. It's so out of like what? <laughs> and and before rewatching cuz it'd been a long while since I've re- at least 3 or 4 years since I've tried watching this again. I could have mm-hmm. swore when you were always saying like that's what you'd have him sign if we met him was is that's what I was thinking the noises he was making. Every other time in the movie, like when he opens the door and Leatherface takes off after Renee is boop, or just when he's <laughs> swinging the shotgun in the air after he fires a shot and shows there was a shell in it, just hey, 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 hey. He's full bushwhacker right there, man. He's just going for it. But no, this, it's this, yeah. it's this super subtle just boop, <laughs> and it's hilarious too because it seems like. He's he's jumping in slow motion. Like he he almost fucking hovers for like a good second. You're like, dang. If that's a good one. <laughs> this is a super specific reference, but if you've ever seen Major League Two, there's a mm-hmm. mock trailer in there for a movie called Black Hammer White Lightning, and it's a <laughs> total riff on every '80s action over the top movie. And there's a shot of Jesse the Body Ventura jumping off like a bridge. And as he's falling, like he's kind of his legs are kind of out, like he's sitting in a chair, kind of thing. <laughs> That's exactly the same kind of fall that McConaughey is doing. In like, it looks it, it's maybe fifteen feet. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> he does kind of hang there for a hot second, but he has enough time like to a get a flying it. squirrel. He, oh, perfect! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a flying, a flying falling squirrel. Beep, beep. <laughs> Oh, it's fantastic. And it is literally the glue that makes me come back to this movie, just so I can have that Beep. one or two seconds. That and uh, the boob flash. But Oh, yeah. I, uh, well, that, that's nice, but I was like, I could just go a whole lot further with that and just, just watch her do the entire sex ed strip tease and varsity blues. Right, which is better. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, obviously way better, but... Which uh, that makes... that's And that's a weird thing to complain about. But I'm going to a little bit of like, just because it's so out of place. Like, the only time I feel exposed breasts fit in a Texas Chainsaw movie is how they use it in another scene in this when it's part of a full body Ed Gein suit hanging mm-hmm. in the closet. That's where I'm like, okay, that's where that feels appropriate. I don't think there's, is there any breasts in the rest of this? franchise cuz I sure can't think of one. I think we get close in 3D. But that's still we have yeah. we have undergarments still on. Um in the Leatherface prequel thing there's like the <laughs> oh, the, one. the girl with all the burns. You see her boobs, but that's just because it's a 2017 movie or whatever and it's like, "Ah, have some sex in here." It just feels out of place. I don't know really, why, it really does, does. but it feels as like why is that in there? And then the reasoning for it is even less like comprehensive. Is they're hanging out? Take a look at them. Yeah, they're hanging out in this office, explaining that their car is broken down to this Darla woman. Something gets thrown through the window. She gets up and like, oh, there they are again, and just flashes her breasts out the broken window, and I'm like they'll do anything to get me to flash them. <laughs> like, what? Okay, yeah. Huh? Property damage? Yeah. Yeah, like it is not cheap to replace windows. It's definitely it not going to make definitely me not, not going to make me want to uh, show some skin in defiance or whatever the fuck. Well, I'm not going to you know drop my pants like and, and do the helicopter. I'm like oh yeah. shit, my windows broke. <laughs> <laughs> Check out my balls. <laughs> Maybe I should start. Maybe I'll feel better so- about the scenario. But okay, so here was the other thing you you brought up uh, when we have our dinner scene, which is kind of like every one of these movies tries to kind of go back to that. Yeah, they all want to recapture the was, dinner scene, and man, is it total a total like 
like visual example of how it's not the same thing when we have it. It's not going to We have a dinner sequence set up in the first one. This one literally Darla just brings home takeout pizza. So here's what I'm getting at with this movie. Mm. And we clearly get, you know, we get to see um, her go to that place, pick up that pizza. And it's a fuck ton of pizza. Like it's like four uh, or five, like, large pizzas yeah it's it's uh, an aggressive amount of pizza but so why are they killing people what's the fucking point in this movie we talked about that before with part two how he has a food truck but he's you know he's using the meat yeah in the chili or whatever which we also had a problem with but with this movie if you're going out and picking up fucking cheese pizzas and sausage pizzas or whatever like what is the purpose of like, what is the purpose of your face? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what brings back in the, the suit guy. Like, he wants people to feel true horror. <laughs> but random people? Like, I mean, yeah. is, it, is it implied? Like, because that's, there's another line in there. It's like, where did this come from and where the hell does it go? Nowhere, of course. But uh, Darla's explaining to Renee Zellweger, like, oh, no, Velmer put this... I'm assuming she means Vilmer. He, she just says he. We don't fucking know. He put this thing in my head, and if I don't do what he says, he'll push the little button and... Pfft, there goes my head. Yeah. Which, I don't think so. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, He's I, smart enough to do that? I don't either, but I mean, he could. maybe she's referring to the business guy, because McConaughey just lets this guy in and totally is the, like... Doesn't want to submit, but submissive to him type of like, let me hear you say you got it. I got it. I got it. So, mm, dude, there's just so much so, where I just, I can't, <laughs> it's too, I can't understand this movie. I want to, I, I want it to be good. I'm just, just like you, where every time you throw it on, you're like, maybe this time, dude, maybe it's going to work for me. And it has the I don't know. it has the difference where in some movies you can throw something out there and you don't need an explanation for it. You just can't, you can go with it. You can go with it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I was listening to a thing about the movie Hardcore Henry the other day, and how the the villain on that all of a sudden has telekinetic powers, and we don't get an explanation why he does. He just does, and you can kind of go right. with it. This one throws out too much shit that you like. I need to know something more like all the stuff with the business guy I need to know more about why like why yeah, makes no sense. why horror on random people and why is it just eventually swept under the rug covered up why is Marilyn Burns being pushed by on a stretcher at the end of the movie showing that like maybe some of these people from the first movie are alive somehow like that is really like pulling a stretch for it's trying to pull a deep cut where, like, uh, the rest of them aren't even superficial cuts. They all are fake cuts. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I, ha- I had something, and I'm like, I just, <sighs> dude, I. I'm pretty sure that I was the know. sales pitch for the for making the movies. Like, I had something, and then just, uh, <sighs> just gone. Like, so yeah, with this um, wanting people to experience true fear. Or whatever uh, this suit fellas after. If what? Yeah, like what is the purpose if the people that experience it are dead? Because it doesn't get to spread. It doesn't get like they don't get to go and say like, "Holy crap, this happened!" You know, like a la F- Freddy versus Jason. Like, oh my god, I fucking brought up Freddy, and now all these kids are gonna go to sleep and they're gonna dream about him. Like, it's gonna spread that fear. So what's how do you spread the fear if you're killing everyone and covering it up? It doesn't does not compute. And it's random people, so it's like an Illuminati thing. You'd think they'd be saving these people for extensive like missions for people they want snuffed out. Mm-hmm. This is pure random happenstance. And it's it's there's I mean there's just so many things it's just like that question why they were done 
that way. Another one, and even this even got me the very first time I rented it and watched it, is after the second car accident, <laughs> when everyone kind of decides it's a good idea to split up now. The, yeah, the super 90s haircut Renee Zellweger boyfriend's hanging back, meets Vilmer. Vilmer, you know, lays out his intentions super fast that he's not here for anything good because he snaps dude's neck. <laughs> Which, that that's a mm. that's an okay scene where he's like, this boy's dead. No, he was just talking a minute ago. Snap. Dead now. He's dead now. <laughs> and this kid just takes off running down the dirt road. Mm-hmm. While Mahakanahe just casually follows him in his truck. And eventually he stops. And Vilmer just pulls up beside him on the he could run anywhere. Like there's trees everywhere. And it's super bright yeah. in these woods. Like I think they're trying to imply they need flashlights and shit to walk around. There's so much goddamn light in these woods. Yeah, way too much light. But dude's just down the road and he just stops like cause he's out of breath. And he's like, Mister, why are you doing this? <laughs> and I'm just what the f- I, it's kind of the brutal massacre thing I just want to say cut like what the hell was that <laughs> uh, that kid went to the Prometheus school of running away from things he does not zig or zag he just runs in a straight line straight line and then <laughs> I mean I don't he does not convey fear or anything just kind of like please mister why are you doing this that's about the same inflection. What I just did is the insane that acting. Thank you. Where's my paycheck for this movie? Mm-hmm. I just did the exact same level he did for that one scene. Please, mister. You're scaring me. And then he gets run off camera. We never see it. He just gets run over three or four times. Runned over, backed over, runned over, backed over. And then he, and then he just gets strung up on the back of Vilmer's truck, looking way too good for a guy that's been run over about four times by a fucking pickup mm-hmm. truck. Then you see Jason goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that dude's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Renee's boyfriend should look like dude from Beetlejuice that fucking goes through the wall, the crack in the walls. No mirrors on the side. That's what that should be hanging from the back there. He should be a fucking pancake man. Yeah, cartoon flat where the tire ran over him. Yeah, yeah two X's over the eyes and a tongue hanging out. That's what that dude should be looking <laughs> like. But he looks super pristine. <laughs> so stupid it's so stupid ah uh, also i mean so here let me just this is just gonna make you just scream no <laughs> oh i can't wait so, we're watching so, it again <laughs> so this is this leatherface is he leatherface from texas chainsaw massacre 3 Oh, that was I, I, that you really wanted an answer, or I thought that was super just rhetorical. Yeah, no, I want an answer. No, this is not even Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Leatherface Two. So, so, if this is the next generation, is that um, Gunnar Hansen? You know what I mean? Like it, it has to, it has to be one of them. It has to, it has to be a Leatherface. From a previous timeline. And that's the problem, is because it just doesn't fit anywhere at all. Like, Leatherface is always the constant, and it's always sur- surrounded by new family. Yeah. But it's like he finds a family of fucked up people. So, this Leatherface, which one is he supposed to be? I don't know. I think the movie's starting to get into your own brain now. I'm like <laughs> halfway through here, and then I'm like, "The fuck is he talking about?" Are we? He has to be one of them. Of, one of what? One of the leather faces from one of the previous films. Oh, like he's just trying to portray it. I don't know. You're like, there's a rip in fucking the reality fabric of time thing. Like, no, goddamn, no. Just he's got to be mean, one if, of. I mean, I mean, that kind of theory faces. could fit in here as much as anything else fucking could. Right. Oh, because so Gunner survives. Each, well, and, I mean, and Ari Mahalov survives. Be, be, but yeah, yeah. I guess uh, Bubba from Two is is out because he gets chainsawed in the gut and blown up. Uh, <laughs> uh, neither. I don't think he's fucking anywhere. Neither. Uh, this is the most. So it's a whole new family. Yeah, may, maybe they're trying. This maybe is... they're trying the thing of like, well, Leatherface has been kind of in the forefront for like. 
these previous three movies, like it's Leatherface and the family kind of thing. Maybe they were trying to really kind of bring out the it's the family and not have one guy, Leatherface, the only one that's always going to live, be the shining star. Like maybe we kill the shining star this time and he's actually just dead. And like the side guy is side guy is Leatherface now, and he just happens to live, as opposed to, well, of course, everyone else is gonna go, and Leatherface is the one that survives, kind of thing. Gotcha. I I I, I don't know. So like, the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies are like the Cosby Show, and this <laughs> one is like a different world. <laughs> it's the spinoff. <laughs> Maybe, which. <laughs> Unrelated, but I mean, it fits as well as anything in this fucking movie. Uh, another aspect I wanted to bring in and ask you about is it, it, two scenes tied together slightly, in my mind anyway. Uh, at one point when Renee Zellweger is on the run from Leatherface, she goes into an upstairs room and there's the cop in the corner. Mm-hmm. But it looks like it, it's clearly a dude in a cop uniform, but like he has gray skin. So is he a mannequin or is he a corpse that's in a standing position in a cop suit? The fuck is yes. that? Yeah, I, I just, just. What do you think that is? Because I know there's, there, I don't think there is a definite answer on what that is. Right, it's just rigor mortis. It's just a, uh, just he's a he's a decoration, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm like, that's a dude there. I'm like, that's clearly a dude standing there in a cop uniform, and but he doesn't move. And then to tie it into the other scene is during the quote unquote dinner pizza sequence. We have a whole litany of family members that are gray corpses sitting at the table, and I'm guessing it's their attempt at humor. At one point, a dude that's going to be like... I mean, he's the youngest grandfather by far in the series. Just stands up at one point and walks away from the table. Zero X... WE is talking to this guy nonstop at the dinner sequence. And you think he's just talking to a corpse. They're like, everyone here is dead. I'm like, what is he... What, what is... They're like, he's clearly insane. But then the dude just stands up and walks away. Goes. I got no explanation for that, dude. I don't I have nothing. <laughs> and there's the movie in a nutshell. Like, who's I like? I'm, I feel like that's totally Kim Hinkle being like, that's funny. I'm like, we're gonna inject a little bit of humor here. Like, what if he just gets up and walks away? Sure. And then he had like 60 guys on set going, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know, man. And again, we have we, we have Heather the Unkillable character from part two come back. Where <laughs> Heather the Unkillable, that's a fucking perfect like superhero. She is. Name. She's a total airhead ditzy. Her voice is just bizarre. Like she just sounds mm-hmm. strange. She just has a weird like voice that just doesn't kind of fit the the look of her. But she gets after being in the two car accidents, which she's unfazed by. She's put in the freezer, then pulled out and put on the hook. Then she's mm-hmm. thrown in the trunk after she somehow gets off the hook in a, in a cut sequence we'll just imagine. <laughs> and then she's on the floor in the the in the house. She gets Head bit on the, the back she gets bit on the nose by McConaughey. We're not really sure. Like she, he says he want, he's in the mood for love, goes in for what looks like a kiss and comes up with a bloody mouth. We don't see her again until she's later just laying in a slight pool of blood on the floor. Then she's at the dinner table, still unconscious, and then Vilmer lights her back on fire. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the backfire. Yeah, gets her back lit on fire. She runs around for a few feet and then just falls to where Darla puts her out with the fire extinguisher, which there's a, there's a very Texas Chainsaw line of like, you know, I'll never get that smell out. Yeah. And then flashes of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. And then yeah, we off screen, we just get McConaughey's reaction. He puts his robot leg over her head and you see him like looks like he's taking a really painful shit 
Well, we're guessing he's crushing her head. I don't know. Nor do I know why that, that even Renee Zellweger is like, when she has the moment to get away with the shotgun, she's like, Heather, get up. Heather, get up. And they're like, she's not getting up. I was like, you weren't even that close <laughs> with her. I don't even know why you're in the back of her car at the beginning of the movie. Like, Heather sees her boyfriend making out with another chick, gets in her car, takes off, boyfriend catches up, jumps in the car and trying to explain shit, and then Renee Zellweger and her 90s haircut boyfriend just pop up out of the back seat. Yeah, they were back there canoodling, just just looking for any car that had a, an unlocked door so they could get their, bump their uglies Who or does that? Let alone what clearly look to be, they're clearly said to be the smart characters. <laughs> Who the fuck mm-hmm. has ever done that? Like, we gotta get our fuck on. Any car will do. <laughs> How the hell did they get there? Like, did they walk there? Did they neither one of them have wheels? This is the principal's house. No. <laughs> uh, Ridiculous, dude. It's just, it is a, just a jumbled mess of a movie. And I, we've, we've uh, given it many a, many a shot. And I, do you remember the first time you saw this movie? Because I remember mine and I was going to hit you with that. I remember renting it. Like I remember we had definitely had moved uh, houses. <laughs> and the, uh, this you'll you'll love this you'll you will love this I remember renting it I don't know if I even finished it. I may have finished watching it before we like we had a copy made of it <laughs> so I, I was like well I gotta have a copy of it I just had I just have to so I had a copy of it and it wasn't too long after we had rented it and had a copy done of it and I was watching it on the VHS tape and we had like one of the the tornado warnings hit in town Mm -hmm. and it's like and you're super as fourth grade maybe so like just grabbing some stuff to take down to the basement and i remember like we still had power so like well i'm gonna finish watching texas chainsaw massacre next gen in the basement you know if the shit goes south like i'm at least i have this tape like you imagine tornado hits and like the only thing that salvages i kept texas chainsaw massacre next generation (laughs) right oh my god a boot of it at that yeah, no, that's that's a, that's definitely a nine-year-old's decision right there. That's I'm <laughs> taking next gen with me. I'm gonna be all right. Yeah, I gotta finish this. Yeah. <laughs> what if you? What if? What if your house just got fucking leveled and like you guys were trapped in the basement? <laughs> like yeah. somehow, some way, there was still juice to the TV. Oh, it's like, <laughs> like it's like Principal Skinner locked underneath the pile of newspapers. Like all we had was next gen to rewatch until the rescuers saved us from the debris pile. <laughs> Yeah. There's there's reasoning while I would buy this on Blu-ray and then later I'm like no this movie saved my life. <laughs> right, it's terrible. Five but... stars. <laughs> this movie saved my mm-hmm. life. Uh holy crap. Well, I can't I don't think I can top that, but uh first time I saw this movie, um I used to have to have to go to have my to. dad's every every other weekend cuz he had visitation and um so I'd pal around with my little stepbrother and there was a bunch of neighborhood kids, you know, a bunch of these houses around my dad's house where my brother would go hang out. And, uh, we go to one of his friend's houses and we're hanging out and they had like a big old cabinet of VHS tapes. And I'm like, of course, that's the first thing I'm going to look at. Cause I'm, I've always been the movie guy. So go over and I'm looking at these movies and I see, Texas Chainsaw, The Next Generation. They had a purchased VHS copy of this movie, and I was looking Shit. at the spine with like the lipstick yeah. chainsaw thing. Kind of rad artwork, I, even for the Blu ray. Like the artwork is pretty all right. Like I dig it. I pull that tape out and look at the cover, and I'm like, what is this? Like he had leggings on. I'm like, is this a girl? Is it a girl leather face? We have a girl leather face in this movie? And I'm like, I want to watch this. And the kids. The kid whose house we were at was like, "No, nah, I want to watch a movie. Like, let's let's play. I want to watch an this. actual movie." <laughs> and, and so, yeah, this kid's like, "I don't want to watch that." So I left it sitting out on their coffee table, and like an hour or so later, this kid's mom comes home. Oh boy! And, and I'm like, "Hey, uh, I've never seen this," and she's like, "Ugh." And I'm like, "I have five dollars because I like my 
my mom would always give me like 10 bucks to take for the weekend, you know? And I'm like, I have a $5 bill. She's like, you can have it for five bucks. I'm like, score. <laughs> she wins. And so, yeah, she, she gives me the movie. Uh, my, I'm at my dad's for the rest of the weekend. Don't watch it at my dad's. Like, because they don't want to watch it. They're like, ah. Come home Sunday evening, throw that sucker on. And I was wicked hyped, and my smile turned to a frown so fast. And I just, I, that is like the ultimate feeling of disappointment. Because I was, I was wicked hyped. Because uh, I'd seen one and three by that time. You know, I'm like, yeah. Mm, boy, I'm, boy, how I imagine <laughs> that mom is just on her way home, just like uh, Jim Carrey after he given Jeff Daniels the turbo laxative, just laughing. Just <laughs> 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 waving her five dollar bill in the air. <laughs> Going to McDonald's and getting like ten double cheeseburgers because yep. it was <laughs> it was so long ago. Yeah. Yep. She uh, she oh, wins man. the day right there. Yeah, yeah, I got duped. Um, I've never seen this. Oh, please take it, please. He's gonna yeah, pay get me this to take out it. of here. Oh. You know, free up some space on my shelf. <laughs> yeah, I needed a new doorstop, so this took the place <laughs> of it for the time being. Yeah, good times. Uh, I don't really have anything else that I want to contribute to this conversation. <laughs> Well, that's fine, because we can go ahead and go into more people who hate this fucking movie as much as anyone else does. So it's time for the Amazon <laughs> One Star Review. Hated it. Could you believe there's a ton of these? Oh, I am not shocked. What is shocking, though? It's still like a four and a half star rated movie on Amazon. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I did throw, I did vary it up. I did put a five star in here because I had to know someone that loved the movie, and it's you'll mm-hmm. you'll appreciate the five star rating. But back to one of star, course. September third, twenty fifteen. One star. Denise O'Donnell says, "Don't waste your money." So disappointed, I rented this twice. Although I was uh, supposed to be able to watch it until the ninth, it wouldn't let me, so I rented it again. Oh man, I was kind of hoping she like rented it, watched it, hated it, and like maybe there's a reason I just didn't get it. No, she <laughs> she felt she did what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking for a kindred spirit in Denise here. <laughs> Couldn't find. Can't it. believe I paid for this movie once, let alone twice. I love Renee Z, so I wanted to see it. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. I can't imagine someone on that. Like I rented it, missed my fucking opportunity time window. But I'm a huge Renee Zellweger fan. I got to see this. She doesn't even look like Renee Zellweger in this movie. I mean, she did. She She doesn't look like that no more. She doesn't even look like Renee Zellweger. You used to be my girl. You ain't my girl no more. You're not my Renee (laughs) no more. Way down in Tupelo. Now you go down below. (laughs) See, if we just had Alfredo in this movie, even as as bug nuts bonkers as it is, I would have loved it if we just had that. (laughs) The Alfredo Files. Uh, Nirvana, the whole band, April 16th, 2013, one star, wow. This is just awful. As a hardcore TCM fan, I absolutely can't stand to watch this. I spent the whole movie just shaking my head. (laughs) Do not waste your time or money, not even if you are a hardcore TCM fan, just awful. Not even if there's a fire. I'm not going to watch TCM, even if all of my movies are on fire. (laughs) <laughs> Alexandra, March 19th, 2021 One star, horrible, horrible movie Horrible movie With a laughing emoji Nice William Conway, Jan- or not January February 18th, 2021 One star, worst movie I've ever seen This movie makes Battlefield Earth look watchable Hey, uh, sidebar to that Scientology the movie not gonna, not gonna come as a shock to you I don't think, but uh my wife also likes Battlefield Earth. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern here. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a walking corpse on June 11th, 2011. Says one star. <laughs> I felt violated. Join the club. 
I felt violated after watching this. I dislike this movie. I dislike the fact that there are some X Files nonsense to this one. Ooh, there he goes, X, X Files. Mm -hmm. No wonder they had this shelled for a year and a half. I was robbed of 90 minutes of my life because of this movie. Don't ever watch this movie. Do not. Uncle Chino. August 25th, 2009. One star. Leatherface is a tranny? <laughs> this movie sucks so bad that it is unbelievably... That, is un, that it is unbelievable. Matthew McConaughey is so over the top and so horrible that it makes you want to spew vomit out of your nose and every orifice. <laughs> wow. Renee Zellweger is just as cute as can be, but she also in is in this turd, and it is bad that if you had... That if it had... Brando, De Niro, Ingrid Bergman, and John Wayne in it, it would still suck. <laughs> Leatherface is, I guess, a tranny? Leatherface is a tranny? What the hell? This is stupid. <laughs> Who cares? Don't watch it. Don't buy it. It's awful. Don't watch it. Don't buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I like that he's uh, like he's almost like he's figuring shit out in his own head as he's typing it. He's typing it as mm -hmm. he's thinking it. Like Leatherface is a tranny. Leatherface is a tranny. What the heck? This is stupid. Don't buy this. Put that. Uh, don't watch it. Don't buy it. It's awful on the cover. Yeah. And I probably would end up buying yeah. it because I'd be wrap like, it in a garbage bag it. and then put barbed wire around it and bury it underneath a bunch of dead cats. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but ever since we bought this movie, everything has <laughs> been getting worse. worse. <laughs> Everything's not fine. <laughs> uh, sidebar, if anyone is uh, interested, my copy is a bare bones DVD that I got for $4, which I paid. So I paid a dollar less than you did for the disc. And that's nice. as far as I'm ever going to go with it. That's where my DVD, I think my DVD, I might have uh, picked up at a pawn pawns shop. So. But still has more bonus features than Evil Dead Rise does. That's fucking sad, bro. Right. Cross-Eyed on May 13th, 2008, says one star, still stunned. <laughs> if Plan 9 from Outer Space is still the worst movie ever made, then this clunker is the worst movie ever made in color. <laughs> At first, I couldn't believe my eyes, and then I wanted to poke them out. <laughs> that should be on the cover. I couldn't believe my eyes, and then I wanted to poke them out. That is perfect. Cap captivating. <laughs> yes, that, that that encapsulates the entire ninety-minute journey you're gonna take. Of where of where rough. the hell you go? Yeah, it is a rough journey. D. L. Young, July thirty-first, two thousand and eight. One star. Dumber than dumb. Seen a lot of horror flicks. This isn't one that I would recommend. Very typical events. The acting was okay. Oh, that's a stretch. Uh, but the story itself was just plain dumb and got dumber as it went along. Spent most of the time during the movie rolling my eyes wondering how much dumber this <laughs> flick can get. And it's pretty goddamn dumb. <laughs> dumb. 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 <laughs> dumb. 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 <laughs> you like this one. This is great wordplay from Running Rig on May 2nd, 2005. One star, Texas Chainsaw Crapsicker. <laughs> hey yo, dad jokes all day. This movie is far from being anything great. Some of the characters don't make any sense whatsoever with the original cast. Leatherface's role has been mocked. People spend too much time focusing on other people rather than build up Leatherface. Mm -hmm. First TCM is a classic. Second TCM is great. Mm-mm. Leatherface, but Leatherface TCM 3, Next Gen, and TCM Remake have all made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise a laughing stock. Eat a butt, <laughs> Disson 3. I really hate new directors coming into the horror scene just to mess it up. The only thing that they do these days is make crappy remakes and fill horror movies up with CGI. Enough is enough! <laughs> Did I write that in like fucking 2008? 2005? <laughs> Sounds like 2005, Roger. Who am I here? Just <laughs> grumpy little troll of a human. Different people back then. Yeah. J I, I want to go back in time and kick my own ass. <laughs> Jesuit Johnson. I'm assuming it's really fucking spelled weird. On April Fool's Day, 2003, one star. What? 
I can't believe people actually enjoyed this movie. This movie is so bad, I'm not even going to give it, give my usual in-depth analysis. It doesn't deserve it. Which there was a ton of those, by the way. Which, oh, I, if you're, uh, if, you're an, if you're an Amazon reviewer, yeah, give me a paragraph at best. I don't need the entire sh- thing broke down in 22 pages. As soon as I yeah. even start seeing it's like more than three paragraphs, I'm like, I'm not reading this shit. Give me like one or two really snappy sentences. Yeah, that just express how much you hate it yes. or like it. You can, yes, all this like I don't need the entire like it's like, like like they just put the whole script up there. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, who's reading this? Who is reading the entire plot synopsis in fine detail on Amazon? No, you reviews? can't even get in, You can't even get people to watch a ten minute video. So. <laughs> but like, I'm gonna spend forty minutes reading this one review for it, and then decide whether or not I find it helpful or not. <laughs> all right, so I just had to, after all that, be like you know four and a half star rating. Who are these people? Someone out there loves this movie. I gotta hear at least one of their explanations why. A four and a half star rating. Overall. Almost. Okay, I was gonna say. Yeah, if you look up T, if you look next gen, it is four and a half star rating overall. Overwhelmingly in the five star categories. Yeah. I don't. So I had to know. I don't get it. So I had to hear what one of them had to say, and I feel this is perfect. This this is the most perfect fitting five-star review for this movie from linda lee october 29th 2022 five stars i'm embarrassed by this i'm embarrassed to admit i've watched it i can imagine the embarrassment of having been in it (laughs) beyond stupid and lame five stars that's it oh my god that's yeah well, and then just like one sentence at the end, like, but I had to have it. Because <laughs> that's the sickness that we all have. Three words. I'm a completionist. Mm-hmm. I can't stop. Actually, I have. I broke you. I have. <laughs> you and Halloween Ends broke me. So, <laughs> but that's not to say someone's going to taking... not buy me a $5 DVD of it for Christmas or some dumb shit. So. Oh, I'm taking all the credit. I'm like, you know, I'm, Halloween ends is rough, but I'm like, taking all the credit. I'm like, you don't have to buy this. You don't have to do it. I'm like, why are you going to spend $20 to be angry? Angrier. Yeah, because I am an angry, <laughs> angry man. Uh, like, where else in cool. where else in life logic does that make sense? So like, are you are you are you happy? No, I'm I'm pissed. Give me 20 bucks. All right. How you feel now? Worse. <laughs> Twenty dollars uh, poorer. Well, I suppose now that we're done with the Amazon One Star Reviews evil, Jesus, what does that mean? Jesus Christ. Uh, talk about it in even uh, the most unenviable part of the entire show. It's 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 time to, to play the game? It's time to play the game. Time to play the game! It's all about the game, and how you play it, you get to run out with the wrong crowd, wind up in the reformatory, no respect, no discipline, that's a problem, family values are going straight to hell. <laughs> Boop. Oh, uh, <laughs> we are going straight to hell. <laughs> Boop. Boop. That's just a, that's a Miller Light burp right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit. Too much burp. Boop. We are going to hell because we have to pick a prop. But uh, if you're new here, <laughs> welcome. I'm sorry. You're probably <laughs> asking yourself, what is the game? Well, the game is a deep cut in and of itself where you got to pick a prop from the movie that we are covering, but it can't be a well known prop. So since we're covering Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation, I'll just say, can't have Leatherface's mask, can't have his camo jacket. Who the fuck can't have wants his it? Chainsaw. Because those are just uh, low-hanging fruit and super easy. So you have to suffer like we have to suffer. You have to pick something odd from this movie that will be in your collection for the rest of your life. Uh, Let us know on Discord. Let us know on the comments on this podcast. Let us know on Patreon. Let us know on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you can find us. Oh, boy. (laughs) Um, 
I I really only have one. Okay, all right. I make it. What you got? Because I I don't like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> uh, I love it. Like, all right, now what do you want to have from this movie to commemorate in forever in your possession something that was on camera or involved in this film? What are you like, what's what's the immortal piece you want to live on forever? You're like, here's from Next Generation. Cool, huh? Yeah. Um, because I don't like anybody in this movie. I don't like any character really. I don't like any actions in this movie. The only thing that sticks out to me is Matthew McConaughey. So I, if I have to, like, if you're if you're like, take a prop out of this fucking trailer, or you know, or I'll shoot your dog. Uh, <laughs> It would be the remote control to his leg. That's the only thing I could fucking think One of. One of the remote controls? He's like seven. Yeah, he's got four, four billion of them. Why aren't they Seems charged? Has a good battery. Why aren't these charged? Yeah, just one of those the, remotes. The, That's about all I've got. How the fuck do you charge your remote control in the mid-90s anyway? Yeah, I don't know. Put the put it in the freezer so the batteries are... Oh, yeah, yeah. Slightly the storage juiced. freezer. Yeah. <laughs> Next to the body. I had the... I had a fuck of a time. <laughs> I bet. With this. I but I, I took a different route. I felt very Wes Craven. I felt super Wes Craven about my decision because when he was tasked with doing New Nightmare, he watched all the movies previously in the Elm Street series and was like, is there anything in this I could, you know, could play off of, could jump from? So he, I know what you're picking. So he decided to jump out of the film entirely. So... Probably the one and only time I'm going to do this. I am jumping out of the film entirely, and I just want the original print of the actual film for this movie. And then I'd like to slap Kim Hankel across the face with it. <laughs> oh, nice. I totally thought you were, you were going to take the uh, meat hook. Ah, I, 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 I literally looked at everything. I was like, uh, 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 and I, even, I think I told the wife, I was like, you know, I, I wish I just had an original printing of this. And I was like, to, uh, then, then she's like to burn, like to destroy, and I'm like, no, that's too easy. <laughs> I would keep it, just be like, yeah, there it is. There's the original pressing of the actual film. There's a celluloid of TCM4, and like maybe if I ever came across Kim Hankel because he was so pioneering. This is it. This is this is gonna be the new scariest Texas Chainsaw, and just slap him with it, and be like, shush. Mm -hmm. Just your face. Shoosh. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be getting in his car for work tomorrow, and I'm going to just jump off onto the roof. Boop. <laughs> Lean over the Slap driver's hand. <laughs> It'll probably be like uh, major pain. Don't you ever make this again. Ever, 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 ever. Or like uh, the I quit match with the fucking steel chair. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I you quit. fucking quit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like 20 unanswered fucking <laughs> shots to the head with the unprotected chair shots to the head with a reel of film. What's oh, this? That's the fuck. Texas Chainsaw original film. Well, what's that all over it? Kim Hinkle's splattered brains. And, you, and then you hold him down and cut his fucking ponytail off. <laughs> Does he still have the ponytail? I don't know. He's probably bald now, but maybe <laughs> Take the source of his power. If his power is that's his power source. <laughs> used to hair. make next generation, it ain't much power. Mm. I would probably give him a fair <laughs> shake, though. I'd be like, "All right, explain yourself." And then, as soon as I started not liking what he was saying, then I would start the slapping. It'd be like Reservoir Dogs. I would have him duct taped to a chair and then be like <laughs> dancing around with a can of gas, like explain yourself. But it doesn't matter what you say because I'm still going to torture you anyway. Yeah, I'm just lighting. <laughs> I'm just pouring gasoline over the reel of film and just spreading it out around him, just wrapping him in it like a goddamn Christmas tree. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what would happen because I. It doesn't matter what you say, dude. I'm still going to kill you. <laughs> I'm going to see if <laughs> you. Still made this. I'm going to see if you burn shit because that's what I have here in my hand. A reel of shit. I, f I feel so bad. I, there's got there's bound to be someone that's listening to this or or just in general that actually likes this movie. And I, I do want to say at least this. We do not bash movies uh, often. It's, it's something that we try to stay away from. We're fairly positive people. Um, and it's really hard 
to uh, look down your nose at a crew of people getting together making something because that's spectacular that it even exists it's it's awesome that it can be created and it exists in the world and you can buy it and it's there for you to enjoy or dislike but that being said this movie just isn't a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie to me and it's super rough around the edges and I, I can't help it so I had to say what bothers me about it but I respect it just don't like it <laughs> and I'm in the boat of like uh, you know I some of the shows I listen to pods I hear I will purposely seek out ones that are like they're gonna hate the movie that I love mm-hmm just, just to so hear. you can have that yeah. alternate perspective, yeah. Yeah, just to see here how the, see here and here, just to hear how the other side uh, feels about things. Like I know a few of my pods have done franchises and have done uh, the, like they've done the Elm Streets, and I'm like, oh, I hope. And then there's times I go in, I'm like, I hope they fucking hate it. Like even when uh, uh, partners of the show uh, Cult Forty Five podcast covered the Elm Street series for the first time I was like oh they I still remember uh, one of them getting uh, getting word they're like oh they just get better after three and I was like I don't know who told them that but I was like that is not the popular consensus and I definitely feel mm-hmm. they're going to start hating them more and more and more particularly by the time they get to five and six oh yeah six is the killer and, you know and they 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 were they were pretty rough on some spots in the whole franchise and I'm like you know what I, it doesn't make me hate them in any way i if anything i love them more like yeah tell me more about this stuff i'm almost sadistic about it like yeah and that slapped me in the face and called <laughs> me a bitch tell me the elm street series is garbage <laughs> i like to get pushed around a little bit. yeah i'm fine if whatever your opinion is go ahead and give it to me uh, it, i mean it's just, i guess it's in how you deliver it yeah because there's some people who are just um you know they're out to really, really hurt feelings, or they would really, or whatever. They would genuinely, genuinely like to slap Kim Hinkle in the face till their brains are all over his hands. I'm saying it yeah. in an entertainment fashion. I would never do that yeah. to Kim Hinkle. I think about Weird this joking. talk about doing it. <laughs> no, no, you're fine, man. You're fine. Yeah, I mean, because uh, at the end of the day, he's responsible for one of the most influential franchises of all time so you know <laughs> and then he took a Vince this. McMahon rap, like I'm gonna kill my creation I'm going to inject it with a lethal dose of poison <laughs> if anybody's gonna kill my creation I'm gonna do it me and the next generation fucking Vinny Mac <laughs> Uh, I suppose on that note, we should probably get going because, after all, there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch them. So why not us? Right? It is easier to resist at the beginning than at the end. <laughs>